Hi, buddy. Is George a bad guy? Yes, he is. We waited in anticipation for them to kick the bucket, in some cases for years. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most satisfying deaths of a hated TV character. He knows my name, occupation. He can find out about my family. My family. What the hell have I done? For this list, we're looking at television characters that audiences honestly couldn't wait to see get booted off their favorite shows, whether they were just bad or really good at being bad. In short, when these characters finally bit the dust, sighs of contentment could be heard far and wide. And this should be obvious, but there are a few spoilers ahead, so spoiler alert. Number 10, Reverend Steve Newlin, True Blood. The Constitution gives us the right to defend ourselves. He started as the polished and fanatical mouthpiece of the anti-vampire movement. But by the end of season four, he was a vampire himself. Let me in, let me in. With a grating personality and a penchant for a good double cross, it was difficult to trust him, let alone tolerate him. I was weak, but I won't be in the future. So when his fellow imprisoned vampires initiated their uprising, they decided they'd had enough. What, what did I do? Oh. Every time I've lost someone I've loved, you've been there. To ensure they saw the last of Newland, Northman prevented him from drinking life-saving blood, then watched as the Reverend proclaimed his love for an unlikely person as he burned to death. I love you, Jason Stackhouse! <laughs> Number 9, Dr. Robert Romano, ER. You should get some sleep, you look like crap. He was a talented physician, but he sorely lacked in the bedside manner department. In fact, he was racist, prejudiced, homophobic, and pretty much any other bad word you could throw at him. Well, I'd love to hear the others, but since the police are on their way... He managed to weasel his way up the authority ladder within the hospital, despite the fact that almost no one actually appreciated his presence. What makes you think I give a rat's ass? But they wouldn't have to deal with him much longer. After one unfortunate encounter with a helicopter, Rocket Romano is faced with spinning blades once again on the hospital roof. It doesn't end well. <laughs> Number 8. Ralph Cifaretto, The Sopranos. It was all downhill from here. Now, I know it's, it's tragic to think this way, but you can't argue with the f***ing logic. Even as far as criminals go, he was unlikable. And not just because he was volatile and susceptible to outbursts. Stop! Well, stop! <laughs> After Ralphie beat his pregnant girlfriend to death and killed a prized horse in a stable fire, Tony Soprano had been pushed to the limit. He ends up strangling this particularly annoying member of his crew to death, and then his cronies gruesomely dispose of his body parts. Let's go. However, we admit Ralph put up a better fight than Adriana, but in the end, they met the same fate. Number seven, Rosalind Shays, L.A. Law. I'm not a young gal, and I know what I want. As an attorney, she was pretty aggressive, which is good when you're handling a case, but not that great when you're trying to get along with your coworkers. Fighting over a moot point? It's not a moot point, Leland. It's a contingency. It's what every good lawyer plans for. She didn't have much in the way of a sparkling personality, opting instead to try to manipulate and annoy her colleagues as she attempted various power grabs. I don't resent you, Leland. If anything, maybe I resent myself. She eventually got her comeuppance when she played out what had not yet become a soap opera cliche, when she became the victim of a curiously absent elevator car. For staying with a man who doesn't love you. I really don't want to talk about it. Ah! Oh! Oh! 
Number six, The Reaper, Criminal Minds. You think I'm afraid to die? You're not afraid. You're greedy and narcissistic. As an incredibly elusive serial killer and Agent Hotchner's arch nemesis. I'm gonna be more famous than you even realize. You knew these two were gonna eventually have a showdown. What the hell took you so long? I was beginning to think this phone was dead or something. Unfortunately for Hotch, that final confrontation did not come early enough to prevent the death of his wife. <laughs> Unfortunately for the Boston Reaper, that particular death was enough to send Hotch over the deep end, spurring him to pummel his wife's murderer to death instead of taking him into custody after he finds him in his home. Hotch! He's dead! Hot, stop! Come on, stop! It's over! It's over. Number five, Viserys Targaryen, Game of Thrones. I don't care. You can have him. He was a horrible older brother, as far as older brothers go. I would let his whole tribe f you. All 40,000 men and their horses too, if that's what it took. He used his sister as a bargaining chip to gain access to an army, but his attempt at a power grab for the Iron Throne was doomed from the start. I need a large army. I'm the last hope of a dynasty, Mormon. His loathsome personality proved to be his downfall, as in a drunken stupor, he commits a number of fatal faux pas in his powerful brother-in-law's presence. Get your hands off me. No one touches the dragon. Khal. Threatening to murder Daenerys and her unborn baby unless he gets the crown he was promised. I want what I came for. I want the crown he promised me. And you know what? He does end up getting that crown. A crown for a king. <laughs> Number four, the governor, the walking dead. Like I said your choice. This particular survivor of the zombie apocalypse seemed like he'd be more comfortable among the zombies. What else is there to talk about? He had a strange obsession with control. No hard feelings. And as the appointed or self-appointed governor of a seemingly idyllic survivor community, he used whatever tools he had at his disposal to maintain it, including murder. No. Killing killers. When this villain and his group descend upon our crew of protagonists at their prison home for a guns out confrontation, the eye patched one finally gets what's coming to him a bullet to the dome. Number three Red John, the Mentalist. Red John, he's a serial killer. This is his style of cutting. Look at the toenails. Yeah, I see them. In true serial killer fashion, he went after and killed the family of one of the individuals on his trail. Ten years ago, the serial killer known as Red John killed my wife and daughter. We've been hunting for him ever since. In this case, he murdered the wife and daughter of Patrick Jane, the show's protagonist. Of course, that made him the antagonist of the entire show, meaning there would have to be a face-off between the foe's psychic foes at some point. Are you sorry that you killed my wife, Angela, and my daughter, Charlotte? After years of seeing Red John and his minions kill dozens of innocents, Jane finally has enough and personally ends the killer's life by strangling him to death with his bare hands. Number two, Gus Fring, Breaking Bad. Can I help you, sir? Diet Coke, please. Walter White had few intellectual contemporaries in the drug world. I don't think we're alike at all, Mr. White. And while his intelligence was certainly a component in his survival. That is not the only factor. Fring had something on Walt, a complete lack of conscience. I do this. That was what made him so dangerous to basically anyone who crossed his path. Last chance to look at me, Hector. 
So when good old Gus entered a nursing home to kill Hector Salamanca, it was a shock to him and to us that he ended up getting a face full of explosion. Before we kill off our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Now it's over. Your grace does me a great honor. It's not meant as an honor. Number one, Joffrey Baratheon, Game of Thrones. It's not every day that you wish death on a teenager, but for this character, we think almost everyone made an exception. Kneel before your king. As a king, this product of incest proved himself to be brutal, I'll gut you, you little cunt! Exceedingly sadistic and viciously temperamental. I said, kneel! Which aren't exactly the greatest qualities for someone with a buttload of power. Time has come for all of us to contemplate our history. My lords. When he attempts to humiliate his uncle at his wedding feast, this awful kid suffers a much-awaited death right in his mother's arms. I'm sorry. That's a shame. Do you agree with our list? What do you think is the most satisfying TV death? Easy, easy. <laughs> Don't get all worked up. For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.